Well, it is what it is. Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Phillies on Sales Media. Terry Cappen, this afternoon's given to the Philly Phillies and the Pittsburgh Pirates as the Phillies lose 5 to nothing to the Pirates as they fail to sweep the series but still manage to take 2 out of 3. Now, guys, before we get into this video, please subscribe if you have not yet. Please don't forget your bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. Uh, so the six-game winning streak does come to a close here this afternoon uh, as we get shut out uh, here this Sunday afternoon. For whatever reason, we do not seem to play very well uh, at uh, at home during day games. I, I don't understand why. Uh, it's just a pretty typical thing with this team this year, uh, for whatever reason why. So I'm not overly mad. I'm not. I mean, uh, we're still uh, 16 games over that 500 mark, so we still sit very, very comfortably flying out. Uh, to the West Coast to play the Arizona Diamondbacks, a team that's not where they want to be. Of course, they're no slouch at home. I mean, that was proven last year when we got swept down in a three-game series. Uh, but I fully expect to take care of business against the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's not really uh, too much of a concern. Like, this is a much different ball club uh, than when we flew out there last August. Uh, so I'm not really too concerned about that series. I, I, I will say that. It was a very flat loss here, Saturday night, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't like last week when we lost to New York Mets, uh, and uh, it was just such a heartbreaker. I mean, it was, it was flat from the very beginning. Uh, and granted, we were going against our best starter here this afternoon, but Noah Syndergaard was not sharp at all, allowing five earned uh, and just five and two-thirds, right? I mean, he's just changed so much as a pitcher. He, he's not that flamethrower he once was prior to Tommy John during his time with the Mets. He's changed. He's had to redevelop, as I've mentioned many times uh, on the show before. Uh, he's had to reinvent himself in many different ways. Today, he just wasn't very effective, right? He was, he was attacking with change-ups. Uh, and uh, it, it just wasn't effective. It just wasn't effective. As a big of the scoring summer here in the top of the first inning, Key Brian Hayes singles on a line drive to right field, and uh, O'Neill Cruz comes around to score. It's just now one nothing Pittsburgh. So it, it was bang bang. I mean, Matt Vierling totally missed playing a ball out in center field. O'Neill Cruz hits a line drive uh, out to you know, let's say a little bit towards left center, uh, and uh, Matt Vierling the ball bounced, the ball dropped, it hit the grass, it hit the grass. Then he dives. Like, why are you diving after the ball touches the grass? Why? I mean, the ball already has landed, and yet, and yet he dives. It almost reminded me of something you do in LB to show, like, he accidentally hit, a, hit, you know, hit the bumper on the top, you know, on the top of the controller, and uh, it makes the guy dive. It almost looked like something you see at a video game in LB to show. It's like, it just was bizarre. Uh, and then he has to get, I mean, that was just a boneheaded play. That was just simply just a boneheaded play, and it allowed O'Neal Cruz to move up to third. And then the very next pitch, he, Brian Hayes, singles to right field. That ball was roped, uh, and it's one nothing Pirates. So just bam, bam. You know, it didn't take him very long. Uh, so uh, there you go right there. So that, that was very, very frustrating, I'll be honest. It's kind of seemed to set a tone. That's kind of how it went for the Phils today. Uh, they didn't seem to be engaged in this game. They just, they looked very, very flat. Uh, it was a very, very flat loss. That was a great way to sum up this loss. Very flat, very boring, no excitement at all. Uh, and, of course, they had they did make a little noise there. I mean, bases loaded, uh, two out, do any damage. Very, very unfortunate. We pick it up here on the top of the fourth inning. Greg Allen uh, bunts back to Noah Syndergaard uh, as a, he flips over to Album at first as the throw was in time. But meanwhile, uh, Marioka was able to come around to score. Uh, and the Pirates now lead it 2 to nothing. Uh, so, and that was a you know, very good execution uh, right there by the Pirates. I, I will say that you, you can't uh, you can't deny it, and something you don't really see too much in the game today. Uh, you know, very rarely do you ever see that. Uh, so, uh, you know, that worked out for him. I mean, I, I was concerned that throw by Noah Syndergaard. I mean, my gosh! I mean, like he like underhanded it. I mean, like I, I was like, oh my gosh, is it going to be in time? Should have just threw the ball. Honestly, he should have just threw the ball. Uh, instead, he just lobs it. He just underhands it to Alpha. I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, you know, that, I mean, I, I was just like, I, I was like holding my breath. I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope that the, the throw was in time. Uh, and barely, he barely got him. Now we get up here in the top of the sixth inning. Michael uh, Chavez singles on the line drive to left field. Ryan Reynolds comes around to score. Is this now 3 0 Pirates? So this is the start of Noah Syndergaard's roughest uh, part of the game. Uh, you know, the, the, here in the top of the sixth inning, he was not sharp at all. He wasn't sharp here this afternoon, period. Uh, but it, it was especially worse here in the top of the sixth inning. Uh, so the Pirates get another. Then we pick it up here in the same inning. Uh, Marcano, as he reaches on a fielder, shorts with Noah Syndergaard. Of course, the ball was hit right back to him, and Noah Syndergaard throws home. And the throw was not in time. Uh, of course, the bases were loaded at that time, and they got nothing. Uh, so that goes back to my point again. I mean, it just the sloppy mistakes, the not having your head in the game kind of place, right? I mean, just 
they they really did look disengaged in this game. They they really did. I I just they they didn't have it together. As positive as I am about this loss, I mean I, I think a lot of people coming on here. I mean the the the, the diehards that watch me every single day. Uh, I think are probably saying, wow, he's actually being positive uh, because I understand I've been called a pessimist. I've been called, you know, overly negative in the past. You know, some of the viewers have expressed their opinions and that's fine. Uh, but I mean, as is, is, is positive I am about this loss, I mean, still, I mean, they, they just were not engaged. They just didn't have their heads in the game. And also, I mean, that wasn't the first blunder Noah Syndergaard I made. Mean, of course, underhanding the ball out, boom. I mean, uh, uh, almost uh, allowing him to reach first. Uh, so this, it just was one of those days. Let me pick it up here in the, in the same inning. Lee Madris doubles on a line drive to right field as, uh, Rodolfo Castro comes around to scores. The phone was not in his pocket. Uh, and, uh, that was Madrid's, uh, seventh double of the season as it's now five, nothing Pirates. Uh, so uh, that would be your final. Uh, they shut out the Phillies. Al Schwarber, it hits the form tight Leon spot, two strikeouts as well. Uh, so he just wasn't there here this afternoon, no question. Uh, Nick Castellanos also going hit us out of the two holes. So we put Nick Castellanos in the two hole. Uh, that, that is, that's a move I question a little bit. I, I just don't know how productive Nick Castellanos is going to be out of that two hole. I don't really love that move by Rob Thompson. Uh, and he clearly wasn't productive here this afternoon. Album gets a start at first as Reese Hoskins, as I did mention, did get the day off. And I, I like that, right? I mean, he was he was already scheduled to get the day off. You know, within the next couple of days, he decided to take it today. And it was a perfect time. This is a team that's on a six-game winning streak going into this game. We're going for a sweep. Uh, we're playing the Measly Pirates. It was a perfect time to take the day off. You could have picked a better day to take the day off going in. Of course, you know, hindsight is 2020. You know, maybe could have used this value this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, when you have Emilio Sosa coming up with the bases loaded, how much faith do you really have in a guy like that with the bases loaded? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, I mean, nobody really had a good day here this afternoon in this lineup. I mean, uh, you know, barely anybody. I mean, the 732 OPS. I mean, for a guy that's almost hitting 300, the OPS should be higher than 732. I have an average about near 300. I mean, it, it, the OPS should at least be over 775. Bryce Harper, uh, one knock here this afternoon as he hits a uh, sharp single out to right field as he also goes down on strikes once. I can't wait to see a Bryce bomb. I, I think we're probably going to see one on this road trip. I mean, we're going to two places that Bryce Harper has actually hit pretty well in his career, especially Oracle Park in San Francisco. Uh, and uh, JT Mucho one knock here this afternoon as well, also drawing a walk. He actually had a pretty productive day. He's probably one of our most productive offensive players. Uh, you know, actually worked some pretty good ABs. I mean, he had a great day behind home plate. Throwing out two more runners, uh, you know, trying to steal. I mean, I, I just love it. Uh, this guy, I mean, they just never learn. They never learn not to run a JT Muto. They just, they like, they just, they just keep failing the test every single time. It's just like, do you, are you ever going to learn that this guy's a beast behind home plate and he's just going to mow you down? Uh, they never seem to get the message, man. It, it, it is, they just don't. Uh, and uh, Gene Segura, he was performance here this afternoon as well. Uh, and uh, Bryson Stott, he'd go hit us, but he was able to draw a walk, which is nice to see. And Matt Feeling clicks two knocks out in center, uh, you know, two singles, and he also was able to draw a walk. A pretty productive day for him as, as well. I mean, I think JT Muto uh, had the best all-around day simply because of his defensive ability uh, and uh, what he did at the plate. I mean, Matt Feeling, probably our best offensive player, though, I will say that, but JT Muto certainly would get uh, the most productive Phillies player here this afternoon. Uh, but uh, certainly not Matt Feeling on the field, man. I mean, that's a rookie mistake. They call that a rookie mistake uh, the ball already bounces and hits the green grass and then he dives I, I mean it just it just was it just was a very strange you know sequence of events it just I don't know. It just, it just was very weird. And uh, Mono Sosa uh, goes hitless here this afternoon. I mean, pretty much, what do you expect? The guy's coming in with the bases loaded two out. Do you really expect Mono Sosa to, to come up and, and do something? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I don't. Uh, and uh, Noah Senior, five and two thirds, nine hits, five runs. All five are earned, one walk, and five strikeouts. A uh, yeah, 3 9 8 year Ray gets smacked with his first loss in a Phillies uniform, uh, 8 and 9 now on the year. Of course, he's coming off of a you know very good start against the Cincinnati Reds, arguably probably his best start in a Phillies uniform. He follows it up his worst start in a Phillies uniform, but he had starts like this before. Remember, his first start against Washington Nationals was kind of like this, right? I mean, that was, I believe we won that game 6 to 5, uh, 5 innings, 5 earned. He wasn't sharp at all. Uh, same thing here in San Diego. It seemed like things were really snowballing on him in the top of 16 and just kept getting this. It almost reminded me of a Kyle Gibson start. Uh, he just he just lost control. He like stepped in gum. He just he just lost it. Uh, he just lost it. Uh, and uh, I mean, it just it just the name Noah Syndergaard really does excite me. But if you go take a look at how much he's changed with having to you know you know adjust to being a pitcher contact out pitcher and having to throw his change up as much as he. I mean, the, the fastball is like sits at like ninety four when he used to sit at ninety eight ninety nine. Uh, so I mean, he's he's really had to reinvent himself. As I said, I mean, I don't know how that's going to age. 
I, I really don't know how that's going to age. I mean, of course, look at you know some of the great Steven Strasburg. I mean, despite him having his injuries uh, and probably his career is probably over. Uh, but, uh, you know, prior to uh, 2018, when all those, you know, stretches of injury started, in 2019, uh, he really was able to reinvent himself. I mean, he, he was one of the best pitchers in baseball that year. Uh, you know, he was a flamethrower at the beginning of his career, right? I mean, he really could throw the heat, and he reinvented himself uh, so well. Uh, and, you know, that changeup was a big game changer for him. I mean, that changeup, he, he, he had one of the best changeups in the game uh, for years, uh, and, uh, I mean, that, that, that's the thing about Noah Syndergaard. I mean, there's still hope for him, but, I mean, the, 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 everybody reacts to Tommy John differently. As I said, Zach Lear actually made him arguably throw faster, uh, but that's not going to be the case with everybody. Uh, so disappointing, very disappointing. And uh, as I talked about before, he just was just overwhelming the Pirates with a bunch of change-ups. Uh, the Pirates! The Pirates! A team that's just, like, just sitting in, like, the, the, the basement, uh, uh, you know, one of the worst teams in baseball. I mean, come on! Uh, Nick Nelson in an inning in a third as he was able to collect the final out there in the sixth inning. Also collect a strikeout. Connor Brogdon, a nice one, two, three inning. I mean, this is a guy that's been pretty hairy recently. I, I, I was a little bit suspicious of Connor Brogdon recently. Hasn't been as productive, uh, but he got the job done here uh, this afternoon. One positive he could take. Uh, and uh, Sam Coon had another one, two, three, top of the ninth inning. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much it. A flat loss. I mean, that's pretty much all you have to say, right? I mean, we win two out of three against the Pirates. Uh, we win six out of seven, and, and, and that's another thing. I said going into these seven games, win six out of seven. What do they do? They win six out of seven. So how in the world can I sit here and complain? The Phillies now 72-56. and 56. As we head on the six-game road trip uh, to Arizona and San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco, I mean, a team we just don't play well against. So I'm, I'm hoping we can win two out of three. If we win two out of three, that will totally meet my expectations. Uh, uh, but, I mean, I, I'm looking for a sweep here in Arizona. I mean, you have to sweep this team, and this is a bad team. All three games start at 940 uh, P.M. Eastern Time. Rangers Suarez on the mound here in the first one, eight and five of the three, three, eight ERA. Going against Madison Bumgarner, six and thirteen, but a four, five, three ERA. So this is a guy's very emotional on the mound. He's he's got some anger problems. I don't like him. He's just he, he's a winner. I understand. I mean, three uh, World Series championships uh, under his belt, but. Uh, you know, he's always, you know, trying to pick a fight or cause trouble. Of course, with Victor Robles, a guy to hit a three-run, a meaningless three-run home run off of Madison Bumgarner, and he just does a little, like, jump uh, as uh, he starts to round the bases. And he, you would have thought that, like, he was doing cartwheels around the bases the way that Madison Bumgarner was talking. Man, I, this is coming from a guy that does not like the Washington Nationals. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that was absurd. I mean, Victor Robles, and of course, he, you know, wore the clown, uh, you know, button on his nose because Madison Bumgarner called him a clown. Uh, so he's just trolling them back. Funny thing I find is, you know, of course, Madison Bumgarner and Zach Lior, uh, you know, only, only one year apart. Of course, Madison Bumgarner is a year older than Zach Lior, but you go take a look at the mileage on the arm. Zach Lior is significantly less. It's almost like a car that's the same year. One has 100,000 miles on it. One only has like, you know, 40,000 miles on it. Uh, so that's, that's the scenario there. This, this is a guy that's just... He, he's just he's a workhorse, but he's just he's he's getting towards the end of his career. So of course uh, he's got a nice uh, pay stub though from the Arizona Diamondbacks. Definitely not worth the money they're paying him. So guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please turn engage the bell. Please like this video. Comment this video. Share this video. Check out the social media link in the description section at Philly Times of Media Instagram Instagram. Follow me on Twitter at Pion Civil Media. Card text two six seven two two five three nine two. Email me Philly Times of Media at gmail.com. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Luke and I'll talk to you later. Let's go Phillies. See you guys.